We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Welcome back to How To Sailing. Thank you for joining so much once again. These videos are made possible by my Patreons and my Patreons only, so a giant, giant thank you to them as well as my channel supporters. Single vs. Dual Helm at first, novice sailors, as well as seasoned salts, often looked at dual helms as more of a gimmick. Gone now are the days where they were laughed at in marinas and anchorages. They are a relatively new feature introduced over the last couple of decades into the world of quote-unquote retail sailboats. Before this introduction, they were only seen on high-end racing boats competing in events such as the Vindy Globe. If you have never had the chance to sail one of these, I can assure you, after you do, you will quickly be sold as they are far superior in every way to single aft helm vessels. Modern boats, now those made in the last couple of decades, are very wide, also known in the world of sailing as beamy. Gone are the days of large canoe sterns, overhangs, and bow spirits. In today's sailing vessels, the length of the waterline is almost the exact same as the length overall. Now 30 years ago, this was not the case, and often you would see a huge disparity in the length at waterline versus the length overall. On larger vessels in the 45 and up range, it was very common to see a difference of 10 feet or more. You may have bought a 50-foot vessel when referring to length overall. However, the length of the waterline was only 37 feet. Older vessels were also much narrower, so a single helm was not nearly as problematic as it is on these new, incredibly beamy boats. The new Beneteau Oceanus 46, for instance, is nearly 15 feet wide in the rear end, and a single wheel in the center would simply not work, as it would have to be far too large in order to get far enough port or starboard to see forward properly. In addition to that, a single wheel impedes fore and aft movement through the cockpit. It basically acts as a giant roadblock consistently in the way. Now you can actually see this live and in person on numerous YouTube sailing channels with their vessel where simply moving around the single helm is clearly a giant pain in the behind. This is very evident when looking at the size wheel needed on a single helm sailboat in order to have a good vantage point on either side of the vessel when healing. Hence the foldable large wheels that are found on several older models as shown here. Twin wheels, also known as dual helms, solve several problems and on a cruising boat they are an absolutely terrific advancement. First, you can sit at almost the whole edge on either side for a clear view ahead while sailing or docking. As any sailor knows, docking is far more nerve wracking than almost any open water sailing, especially when attempting to dock in crowded marinas full of weekend credit card captains who routinely have no idea what the basic right of way rules are when on the water. Between the two helm stations, you can find a comfortable place to sit or stand in virtually any condition, and they also offer an additional huge entertaining area for family and friends. It is very easy to have someone grab the other wheel while you attend to a sheet or other task. Movement through the cockpit as well as heading down below is much, much easier on dual helm vessels. This is actually a very important safety feature as having the ability to quickly rush on deck and get behind the wheel can be the difference between running aground and having an enjoyable sailing adventure. The newer hull designs offer a much wider aft part of the boat, and this makes for a substantially more room in the area of the boat that gets the most use, the cockpit. Longer bench seats on either side for lying down or taking a nap, room for an actual useful cockpit table on centerline versus the silliness that is often seen as passing for a cockpit table. More helm seating positions and overall a much better enjoyable and comfortable cockpit area. That in turn, in reality, just makes for a much more enjoyable sailing adventure. While sailing and while underway, where are you? You're in the cockpit. Where would you like to be the most comfortable? Behind the helm, in the cockpit, while sailing. With dual helms, once you add an arch, and everyone should do this, while some consider them visually obtrusive at first, once the inevitable canvas has been added, dodger and bimini, you no longer notice it. The arch serves several practical purposes. First, the mainsail sheets to the arch, keeping the main sheet out of the cockpit, which is especially helpful during a jive. There is no traveler in the cockpit to get in the way or on deck to interfere with the dodger placement. The main sheet is sheeted further aft on the boom than in some other solutions for greater mechanical advantages. The arch prevents the boom also from dropping into the cockpit, which again is an additional safety feature. With the addition of an arch, you can also add several stainless steel handholds on them to ease moving in or out of the cockpit to the side deck. Given that almost all cruising boats get canvas these days, the arch makes a solid attachment point for dodgers and bimini connectors as well as stiffens them considerably versus the SS tubing bows seen on most older vessels. 
Once you do add an enclosed bimini attached to an arch, you have now added a huge additional amount of living and entertaining space for all weather conditions, as well as protecting yourself from inclement weather while at anchor and still being able to entertain on deck. When full-time cruising, an arch is an almost absolute must-have for several reasons, and adding these large arches on narrow, single-helm vessels in turn often creates what I like to call a jungle gem effect, making it a constant task to accomplish almost anything at the rear of the vessel. With the wheels set down low, the center of gravity is also lower, stability is greater, and windage is reduced. Beyond that, aft wheels tend to offer better feedback and a faster response time, especially when sailing hard on the wind, with some sailors claiming they feel more at one with the boat from a position that's closer to the water. On a more objective level, it's just much easier and far more efficient to have a dual helm for every aspect of sailing. Anything less would be uncivilized. Bonus points if you can tell me what movie that little quote came from. With dual helms, you also generally get the advantage of a swim platform. These keep getting better and better, larger and larger, and easier than ever to use. For example, the transom platforms on the Oceanas 35, 38, and 41 are almost the whole width of the boat, and when lowered, are close to the water for easy access when swimming or boarding a dinghy. It's just one single step from the cockpit to the swim platform. In turn, this makes everything easier, getting on and off the boat in both marinas and at anchor, as mentioned earlier, entering and exiting your dinghy, loading and unloading supplies. I sail and live here full-time in the Caribbean, so access into and out of the water with ease is an absolute must for me. All of my time is spent in the cockpit area of my vessel, and for me personally, I would never own another single helm vessel, as they simply do not meet my personal needs. My needs, however, may be different than yours, so always keep your personal needs and goals at the forefront of any advice you hear. Besides my personal needs, I see zero advantage of a single helm, and in my opinion, if in the market for a new-to-you sailboat, dual helm would be my only choice. Dual helms are now available on vessels as small as 35 feet, so no longer is the need to purchase a 50-foot yacht to get a dual helm setup necessary. Please let me know in the comments below if you agree with me or completely disagree. My absolute favorite comments are the ones where someone clearly has no experience personally with what the video is referring to, however they have all kinds of opinions. Please move those comments to the top as I do enjoy a good laugh. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, these videos are made possible only by my Patreon supporters. Please consider becoming a Patreon as it's only $10 a month, so roughly 30 cents a day. It's cheaper than your Netflix account, and you do get access to my members only community, where I am daily available to chat live in real time, both via the forums on the members area, or also the live chat and video sharing area. If Patreon is not your thing, I do have the Buy Me A Coffee app set up, and if you buy me a coffee, you do get two free weeks access to the members only area to try it out and see if you like it. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.